To build something new in Electude that does not currently exist, it has to enter the platform as a module. And a module is the smallest element, and modules go into courses. So we're going to navigate here to the Modules tab. And think of this as like your filing cabinet area. So we're going to click on <clears throat> ASC Content Areas. So here's our filing cabinet. Uh, we have to choose a folder to place the new item that does not exist. So if I'm building something, uh, you know, let's say for electric electronics, I'm going to pull open the electric electronics drawer. And on the inside, I have these folders to choose from to, to uh, place my item. <clears throat> now I want to build a test, so I'm just going to go into the test folder. It makes sense to put it there, although you can put it anywhere you choose. Over here then to the right, you see the items that are currently inside <clears throat> that test folder. And to add something new that does not exist, we click the plus. Now here's where you have to be really careful. <clears throat> Up here at type, right now lesson is, is set by default. And if you intend to build a test and you title this and you start as a lesson, you cannot change it back the other way after the fact. So you need to pause here for a moment and just make sure that you select what item it is that you want to build. Whether it's a lesson, a test, a lab task, an engine management simulator fault, maybe you want to upload a file like a PDF or a Word document, you can put a web link, or you can copy something you've built and make another version. So I'm going to build a test and we're just going to title this Demo Test DIY Do It Yourself. And you can put a description here about what this test is for. Um, students will be able to read that description when they uh, place their, their mouse over the item. You can, uh, with tests, you can put a default passing score. So in this way, you can give the students a pass or fail. Uh, in the system. So if I set my minimum score to 60%, anything below 60 would be, be failing. Uh, you can also set a time limit. So if you only want to give the learner <clears throat> 20 minutes to take the exam, you can set that. You don't have to do this. It is an option. You can put a level on it if you choose. Um, Make sure if you want the participant to view it that you uncheck this box. If you if you check that box, the the uh, the item's only going to be available for teachers to open, not students. So uncheck that, click add. So now we've created it, the uh, the test, at least the the bones of it, the uh, and it resides here in this folder. The next time I want to go find it. And obviously, if I click start, it just be an empty module. And uh, so we need to create the test here first. So we're going to click Edit Module. And then over to the left and right, we have have a toolbar. You've got an area here in white <clears throat> that where you can insert images. Um, you can put Electude animations in here or your own images. Up here, an area in gray. You know, this would be your text area. If it's a test, this is probably going to be where you're going to put the instructions for the test. Whatever you want to put there. And then your your uh, question uh, would go here in the yellow yellow box area. Just you type your question here. And then you put your answer choices. By default, you're going to have a three-option um, three multiple choice. As the test creator, you always put your correct answer up here at the top. Uh, so and then you put your incorrect answers here, your distractor questions. Make sure as you're going along building your test or your lesson, <clears throat> the, um, you save this often. There is no auto save, so make sure you click the little floppy disk up here in the upper left hand corner to, to save that. If you uh, wish to add another question, you'll find you're going to go over here to the menu, um, to the toolbar on the right. 
notice there's two plus buttons here. The plus button at the top is going to add another page. You can see I now I added a page two. If I go back here to page one, the lower plus adds a question. And you can, you can see here how easy it is to add questions. If you uh, made a mistake and like, you know, I man, I didn't mean to add a page two, you can, there's two selection boxes. The top one would select the entire page. You can see the dotted box around the whole thing and so now if I if I selected this and I click the X you can see it deleted the entire page too now it takes us back to page one now if let's say I added a question that I didn't mean to add <clears throat> I mean maybe I only want this to have four questions and I want to delete question five we're going to use the lower selection box here now you see the dotted box is only surrounding the question box and I click the X and it deletes question five. To put images or graphics here in the left, you've got a couple choices here. Actually, you got three choices. You, um, the little Lego block, if you click this, you have access to all Electude um, graphics from the lessons and quizzes. <clears throat> so if I go to something here like um, um, CAN bus diagnosis, I can click on that, the, uh, the line there and then I have this scroll bar here at the top where I can then go through the various animation sequences. So if I want to if I want to pull this image in I hit OK and it pulls that image in. Um, if I want to, here I'll do this again, we'll put another image in there just to show you what happens here, series circuits. When you go to the next question, <clears throat> typically here, if I add a question, if I add a question after four, notice that it pulls the graphic over. Uh, in case you want to ask another question on that, you can paste over this graphic. So we want it to end here. I can I can choose a different graphic very easily just by clicking another another item here. So you're in control of what you want to go in that in that spot. If you want to put your own picture in here, um, you click the little picture tab. And um, initially, you might only have one folder here. It says images. You can create subfolders for your images. Just simply right click on the image and you can add a new subfolder and title it so you can <coughs> store your images. And then once you, um, you upload your images to the site using the upload button, and then you can select an image and it'll paste it there in the uh, in the box. So you've got uh, your choice of Electu graphics or your own images. Um, and then the last button here is like a, a YouTube video. So if you use this to insert like a video, you click the little movie clicker, <clears throat> you put the URL for the video here. Um, the important thing to note here is it has to have a video player running in the background so either you know YouTube or Vimeo it can't just be a video that's located on a server somewhere it has to have a platform player in here that's um, by the system so I, I would probably use YouTube make it a private video that, that uh, users can only view if they have this link but uh, indeed um, they can, you can put YouTube videos in there and that sort of thing. Uh, in regard to question types, so by default uh, we mentioned you got a three option multiple choice. The little wrench over here in the lower right you can pick or change your question properties. So we got <clears throat> right now it's set to multiple choice with three, three possible answers. And you have a weighting here where you can also change the weight of the question, how many points it's worth. So if I want to change this to five choices and I want to change the weight to five, hit OK. And you can see now we have five choices. When you're creating the correct answer, always goes on top. <clears throat> uh, these will be random, randomized when the learner uh, takes the test. Don't forget to click that Save button often. Okay. Um, let's say let's look at some of the other question types you can do. So we got multiple choice, we got multiple response, and so with this, 
We have, um, this would be like where the learner has to evaluate multiple statements. Um, or maybe this could be, a, you know, which of the following type questions. So a number of answers, we'll leave it here at five. Number of correct answers, let's say three. And we hit OK. Now you see that there are three correct answers and two incorrect. So here again, you type your three correct choices here and your two incorrect choices down at the bottom. We have an open question numeral. So for example, maybe you had the uh, learner take a, a voltage measurement. So for example, we might uh, I'm just making up a question here. <clears throat> so maybe there was a resistor they could measure. What is the resistance of R1, or voltage of R1? Now you specify a unit, what, what the learner is gonna be making. So if I'm gonna obviously measure voltage, we're gonna put volts here. And then here is where you put your answer range. So X is your answer. Um, um, X is greater or less than. So you, you can put a, rent, uh, a range here. <clears throat> so if you want it to be equal, the answer um, to be one number only, let's say we want uh, six volts and only six volts, you're gonna put six on both lines. If, if the meter's kind of jumping around a little bit, um, you can put, if I put five to six, that gives us a range for that. So I'll show you what that looks like here once we exit. Now, once you're out of the out of the, back out of the lesson, you've saved it and you back out. You're going to see there's a number of buttons here. Um, you always want to edit the last saved copy. If you click Edit Module before it's been published, it's going to basically want to start over and it's going to be a blank screen. If this ever happens to you and you accidentally hit the wrong one and it opens to a blank screen, do not hit save because you'll save the blank screen. Just back out. Everything's still there. Don't freak out. You got to go here to edit last save copy. Everything is still there. To avoid that from happening, I often tell folks to just publish the the video or the the item before you uh, when you exit. That way, when you click edit module, it's already been published. You're editing the published copy, so there's no no risk in losing anything. <clears throat> but now. Um, if we start this module, I'm going to show you what that question looks like. You can see what is the voltage R1. So here you would put your correct answer and there's the units that it's measuring in. So if I put um, a 4, obviously it's going to be incorrect. But if I put 5.5 or 5.8, whatever, anything between 5 and 6, it's going to be counted as correct. By the way, when you're viewing <clears throat> this from the teacher login, you're going to get um, the whether or not the answer is right or wrong. Students don't see this. So just so you know that. Okay, let's continue editing. We'll go over some of these other question types. So let's talk about, um, we'll go hit our little wrench here. So we've talked about multiple response, open numeral, open question text. This one here is the most problematic and I probably wouldn't recommend using this one because you have to, the learner has to type the word correctly. So um, if you put a capital letter in here or if you, uh, if the learner misspells something when they're typing in the answer, it'll count it wrong. So I typically don't um, use this type of question just because there's no means to put alternate spellings in here. Um, if you ask the student, if you ask the learner how many wheels are on a car and you put four, but they typed, they typed the word F-O-U-R, it would be counted incorrect even though they correctly identified how many wheels were on the car. So that's why I don't recommend that type of question. <clears throat> um, we got a um, drag and drop question. This is the new question type, uh, which I, I really quite like. We hit, uh, hit OK with this. Here you can see we have um, our drag and drop. We can <clears throat> paste the new image in there. So you can uh, identify. All right, so we can put uh, Mary. Whatever. 
whatever you want to put there. I don't know how to spell curly, evidently. So here, um, you can move, drag these around everywhere, anywhere you want to go here. And then there's your, that's uh, what the questions will look like. <clears throat> uh, the other question types we got here, let's take a look at that. Hotspot question. So here you drag your hotspots. Um, so maybe the this would be your, your correct um, identification. This would be your uh, these your incorrect dots, and you can place these anywhere you want. So um, maybe the question is uh, identify the mass airflow sensor. So you drag your correct dot to where the mass airflow sensor is, and you put your incorrect dots or choices you know elsewhere on the vehicle so also uh, perhaps uh, an interesting type of question of course you can uh, change how many dots you want uh, right here you can have up to six six dots if you want only one correct answer though so so choose wisely <clears throat> okay uh, what else do we got here uh, number from iframe uh, this one here you can basically link to another website if you want a website to show in the white white area uh, you can do that um, don't know if this would really be that that common or just no question at all so um, I think probably the most common questions that most people are going to be using is multiple choice multiple response numeral um, drag and drop and probably the hotspot Again, I can't overemphasize the importance of clicking this save button. And then once we're done with our test and it's all fixed up and ready to go, you publish it one last time. And now it becomes, it's uh, obviously it's going to be found in this, uh, this test folder. And now you can uh, put it into one of your self-made courses. So if I go over here to the courses area, go to self-made, and let's say I want to put it in this course here. I just simply open up my course. There's the modules that are in there now. And you can see it's up here at the top menu bar as well. Go back over here to courses, find my test that I just newly made, drag it up there to courses and drop it in. When I go back over here to courses, there it is at the bottom. If you want to rearrange this, you know, wherever you want, you can drag it up and down the list as you choose. So that's a DIY test, a DIY tool, uh, very easy to use. Uh, if you lose or you forget where you find, uh, where you place that item, you can search for it. You can also go down here to all new and the newest items are gonna be here at the top. You can also use this module filter feature to find things that you maybe you've lost. Uh, you can go over here to settings configure your module filter to look look for certain things for example tests hit OK go back to modules flip the filter on and only thing you're gonna see there is tests and there's the one we just made 